We're making clay plaster. So you mix in <laughs> sand <laughs> and just clay. Are you? Come here. And water. Grab all the good skin off your feet. We're just out adding goat hair to the, it's, this is called ha hairy chalk, no hairy plaster, hairy plaster, and this adds fibre to the plaster, it's natural, it's wholesome, it's eco-friendly, it's wondrous. The walls cost us £30 because yeah. we dug it from the ground here yeah. and we used the subsoil which is a, a sandy gravel, we added some clay that we dug up at the bottom of the garden, mm. we mixed the two together by foot and by yeah. a mini digger and we built the walls for free like basically. This. Yeah. And we brought in a little bit of clay, which was thirty pounds, and uh, and then we've used the same materials in a slightly different way to build the front, so the new piece, which is like a big extension basically. Yeah. So the back bit has been there for four hundred years. The oldest cob house still standing is ten thousand years old, so <laughs> it's quite a You've good. Got a bit of time it's, uh, left. Quite a <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. longevity. It lasts a long time. It's strong. It's yeah. load bearing. It's yeah. got a compressive strength between 5 and 15 tonnes per square foot. It's much stronger than people think. People imagine that it's, you know, mud. It probably won't stay very long, but it's much stronger than, than that. Um, we do a hybrid version, which is half cob and half straw bale. Now, the straw bale um, is massive insulation, as you probably realise, um, and cob has got a high thermal mass. So you basically have a house that's warm in the winter and cool in the summer. So here we have the hallway. This is solid cob walls here. Ooh. Reclaimed pallets on the floor. Uh, like concrete. You can see the old clay lumps here. Um, Focus yeah. in on there. Yeah. And that's the, the clay lump is just a cob made into bricks, basically made into little blocks. And it became fashionable about the 1700s, where they just in this part of the world in East Anglia, they started making them into bricks. I thought they thought it was quite sophisticated, you know, to make bricks rather than just, you know, a lump. Um, but the form we use is just freeform sculpting. We sculpt it directly onto the wall. Really? So I'm a sculptor originally, wow. so that's where I kind of got the interest from. Yeah. And obviously for it to be the most eco-friendly form of building there is, is really a big yeah. draw as well. Mm. Today the, the people are, are making clay plaster, they're sitting clay and sand. Yeah. And, then, and this is what it ends up looking like. This is painted with organic paint. Look at that, I mean, that's just... As you can feel, it's nice and cool in here on a hot mm -hmm. day like today. Oh, yes, it is. Got a nice view of the lake. This is our room for the fireplace, which is, again, made of mud. It's got the same efficiency as a wood-burning stove but it's an open fire, which is nicer. And because it's made of mud, it's free. It also holds the heat. And it's all about design. If you design it correctly, you know, you don't need to spend any money. This whole extension cost under 10,000 pounds. So when we looked into getting a staircase for our house, we realized that the cheapest staircase you could buy, which was a sort of cheap pine one, was 3,000 pounds. This cost us 80 pounds. It's just made of mud. It's just made of cob with some oak treads, and then we've painted it with an organic paint. Plastering, you have made your clay plaster. It is beautiful, it is gorgeous. And we're gonna put it on the wall. Now, obviously you'd normally put it on the inside, but we're gonna be doing it on the outside, just, to sh just for practice, a bit of both. Okay, so this is a typical wall. You'd obviously try and get it as straight as you can before you plaster it. So, the first thing you do is you need to basically to wet it down. And I'm sure you all realise why you need to do that. If you don't, it'll just suck too much moisture from the plaster and then it'll crack off. It'll dry too quickly. Okay, so the reason we spent so long fiddling around with our mix was to get the perfect mix because that is literally half of the battle. So the other half is the timing. So it's getting the clay plaster on the wall and finishing it at the right time. Okay, so we're gonna put it on, let it go off a little bit, 
and then finish it when it's just about ready to be finished and that's when you get that perfectly smooth beautiful finish just get a nice bit of sandpaper unless it's brand new they're all going to go a little bit rusty so i always just use the sandpaper It's got to be the right consistency. Now, some people use floats, you know, which are chalks rather, which are you hold it with a hawk. I just use a handful. You know, it's up to you. You've got to get your trowel fairly wet. Place it on. Obviously, it's just like icing a cake, essentially. You're just using a fair bit of pressure. If you can keep the angle as low as possible, you get more of a sweep. But, you know, obviously it's very easy to knock it off like that. So just bear in mind, you see how much pressure and force I'm using, quite a lot of force to get it on there. You want to squeeze it into all the holes so that it has a good key. Obviously, if the wall is too flat to start with, you can do a little scoring up. And this to me is the joy of life. This is the joy of life. This is just heaven. You know, going around a window with plaster. It's like, you know, can't get much better than that. <laughs> well. <laughs> So we're just going to literally slide it on. And again, when you're doing curves, a brush is your best friend because you can brush on lots of angles. So you can literally start it off with your hand and then slide it on with a trowel. Over. Okay. Like that. Keep this wet. I mean, you look at house prices today, they're phenomenally expensive. And um, so to try and get a decent family home costs an absolute fortune. To build a traditional home, um, or a modern home these days, um, is expensive as well. And if you buy one of the new, like, wimpy homes or something like that, they cost a fortune and they're a load of rubbish. Um, whereas these are taking it back to, you know, earth, um, and all the supplies are here in the ground, so it's great. Mm -hmm. Why something a bit more natural, sustainable, comfortable, mm -hmm. and something that I could build myself, really. It's interesting for us. Yeah. Um, it's a move away into more sustainable, more eco-friendly properties, and we want to build our own house. Uh, because we have a green business and we are looking to build things really like pizza ovens, benches, um, possibly storerooms. Now I like the fact that you can sculpt with it and I think it's amazing ecologically sound um, methods of building but also sculpting other things. I, I wanted to try and integrate it into some community arts projects, uh, maybe make some earth ovens and benches the community. Uh, some friends and I are planning on building our own home so uh, we wanted a sustainable home um, and uh, yeah. We, and, th uh, and this is it? This is, this is the, our journey, part of our journey, beginning of our journey. Yeah.